Hello, hello, writers. I'm Kristen Kiefer, author of fantasy fiction and creative writing resources, and you are listening to the Well Storied Podcast, where I share insights, encouragement, and actionable advice designed to help you craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, always in 30 minutes or less, so you can get back to writing, of course. Ready for the show? Let's get talking. Hello and welcome once again, writers. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the podcast. Today is Friday, November 22nd, 2019. And as always, today's episode translates the latest article from the Well Storied blog into audio so you can listen in on the go. Titled How to Craft Alluring Intimate Scenes, you can find the article that also serves as the episode transcript at www.well-storied.com slash intimate. Now let's dive in. From tentative first kisses to explicit sex scenes, intimacy in fiction can exist in many forms. Included in that range is the popular fade to black, in which an intimate scene ends before anything too explicit happens on the page, nevertheless implying that characters share certain intimacies off-screen. A vulnerable conversation between friends or lovers can prove quite intimate as well, though today we're going to stick to physical intimacies and how we can write them. Those awkward, cringeworthy love scenes? Those are exactly what I'm going to show you how to avoid today, using techniques I've gleaned from Diana Gabaldon's I Give You My Body. Though Gabaldon uses this book to offer advice on crafting intimate scenes, many of the tips she shares can be applied to nearly any scene you write. In fact, this is the book that inspired my article and episode on framing scenes like a filmmaker. But... When it comes to tips for writing intimacy, I love what Gabaldon says in the book's first chapter. Quote, Where most beginning writers screw up, you should pardon the expression, is in thinking that sex scenes are about sex. A good sex scene is about the exchange of emotions, not bodily fluids. End quote. This is true regardless of the type of intimate scene you're writing. Even when characters approach intimacy in the most carnal of fashions, there will always be emotion at play. This is vital to understand as you approach any intimate scene you write. As Gabaldon goes on to say, quote, Lust is not an emotion. It's a one-dimensional hormonal response. Ergo, while you can mention lust in a sex scene, Describing it at any length is like going on about the pattern of the wallpaper in the bedroom. Worth a quick glance, maybe, but essentially boring. End quote. Have you ever read a book in which the author goes on and on about their character's attractiveness and the physical pull that exists between them? Chances are that the scene felt pretty bland. Maybe it even induced an eye roll or two. I know I've read such scenes and thought, great, your characters are supremely sexy people, making out like the world is about to end. But why should I care? At the end of the day, lust may attract notice, but it won't attract interest. At least not the type of interest that keeps readers invested in your story making them care about your characters and the relationships they share. So let's talk about the role of emotion in intimate scenes. If you want readers to feel the passion and excitement your characters are feeling, or the insecurity, self-doubt, or any other feeling that comes into play, then emotion must take center stage. So the next time you sit down to write an intimate scene, first ask yourself, What are my characters feeling as they enter this scene, both about themselves and toward the other person? And, why do my characters' emotions result in shared intimacy 
in this particular scene? This second question is especially vital to ask because it forces you to confront whether your characters should have to act out of character for your intimate scene to play out as you planned. Ensuring that they won't have to act against their natures will keep your intimate scene from feeling unrealistic and gratuitous. In some situations, your characters will act outside of their typical natures in an intimate scene, but only when something powerful motivates them to do so. A painfully shy heroine isn't going to simply give in to her desire to make out with a local bad boy unless she's experiencing an emotion that overrides her anxiety. Remember, lust is not an emotion. Physical desire alone is rarely powerful enough to make someone act outside of their nature without extenuating circumstances coming into play. That said, it's not enough for your characters to simply feel things in an intimate scene. Intimacy requires vulnerability, and vulnerability always results in an exchange of emotions. And when your characters exchange emotions, their inner landscape shifts, as does the relationship they share, at least in some small way. With this in mind, a good intimate scene becomes a turning point. It takes a story and shifts it in a new direction, sometimes only slightly, and sometimes in the most notable of ways. The magnitude of the shift does not matter. The simple fact that the scene serves as a turning point is what gives intimacy a larger power and purpose within the context of your story. So, what does it mean for your characters to exchange emotion in an intimate scene? In I Give You My Body, Gabaldo notes that there are three main ways that characters can share emotion, through dialogue, expressions, and actions. Here's an example of each form of emotional exchange from my upcoming fantasy novel, Lady Legacy. For our oaths we are alone, she said. Do we not deserve some consolation, even if we must make it for ourselves? He was silent for a moment. So I am to give you consolation. Kleena frowned. You are to give me nothing that does not please you, my lord. End quote. Expression. Quote. The look on his face was as unhindered as she'd ever seen. Naked, and not a small bit desperate. End quote. And action. Quote. She placed a hand upon his cheek, her thumb grazing the soft contour of his mouth. End quote. Once you've established your scene's emotional landscape, it isn't necessary to give readers a physical play-by-play. Readers are quite good at imagining scenes from themselves, provided you give them a few key physical beats. Of course, explicit detail is fine in many stories. Just remember that a good, intimate scene always leads with emotion, no matter its nature. Next, let's talk about the language of alluring intimate scenes. In intimate scenes, Physical details should err on the side of sensuality. Even the simplest and sweetest of kisses can turn icky if you describe the physicality of it all in too much detail. Instead, use the five senses sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell to paint readers a sensual picture. Again, here are a few examples from my upcoming novel, Lady Legacy. Sight. Quote, he eyed her for a long moment, searching, before the tension left his body and he became once more the man she had known on the balcony at Alamada, in the shadows of the sanctuary, in Caristeel's gardens. End quote. Sound. Quote, on the contrary, little though I know you, my lady, I hesitate to think you do anything that is not of consequence. There was a note of mirth in his voice that chipped away at the tension mounted in her chest. She laughed. End quote. Touch. Quote. 
He trailed a lazy finger down the length of her sternum, and her skin prickled at the touch. End quote. Taste. Quote. The taste of him was wood smoke and ale and bright mountain's mint, as alluring as it was familiar. End quote. Smell. Quote. She could smell the salt on him, and something darker. The hearth fire and ink, the sweat of the day, the anticipation of the night. End quote. When using lyrical language in intimate scenes, focus more on the scene's emotional landscape than the physical detail. The latter often results in the use of awkward and distracting euphemisms for otherwise straightforward sexual terms. When writing and revising intimate scenes, also give thought to pacing. Generally, you'll want to match the rhythm of the scene to the rhythm of the action. Passionate makeout session? Pick up the pace. Slow and sensual? Well, you get the idea. Finally, let's talk about the after effects of intimacy. As you wrap up an intimate scene, don't forget to take stock of your character's emotions. In most cases, an intimate act is going to affect your character's inner worlds in some way. This doesn't have to be a grand way, but remember, a good intimate scene should serve as a turning point in your character's stories. Perhaps, feeling the high of satisfied desire, your character gains a measure of confidence in her sexuality that affects how she acts in other elements of her life. Or maybe, having finally confessed their love for one another, your characters begin to make plans for the life they'll build together. Both outcomes, though ranging in their magnitude, are equally valid and reflect how your characters' changing emotional landscapes affect their actions and ultimately their stories as a whole. And that is what an alluring intimate scene does. It gives readers deeper insight into your character's inner worlds, changing or strengthening the relationships they share and affecting their actions and motivations as the story continues to unravel. Keep this larger context in mind, and you can't fail to write intimate scenes that will seduce readers to keep on reading. Did you enjoy this breakdown? Today's episode pulls heavily from the tips and techniques that Diana Gabaldone shares in the Quick Start 5-Minute Guide to Writing Sex Scenes at the beginning of I Give You My Body. I've found this book as a whole to be revolutionary in my writing life, and I'd recommend that any writer give it a read, so long as they're okay with a bit of lurid language, that is. To check out the book for yourself, make sure to click the link included in today's episode description. All right, friends, that's everything from me. Until next time, happy writing. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Podcast Writer. I hope you found it helpful to your writing journey. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a new episode, and to give the podcast a quick rating and review. Doing so goes a long way toward helping the podcast reach new writers and lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm creating. You can also give me a shout out directly on Twitter at Kristen underscore Keeper. For additional guidance as you work to craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, be sure to head on over to www.well-storied.com, where I share blog posts, workbooks, e-courses, and other helpful resources for writers. Again, that's w-e-l-l-s-t-o-r-i-e-d.com. Thank you again for tuning in to today's episode, my friend. Until next time, happy writing!